Hey YouTube, today we're going to be doing a little bit of a Mythbusters test. Kind of like the show Mythbusters where they prove whether something's right or not, scientifically testing something. And what I'm going to do here is I have two Smith & Wesson revolvers and I have two Colt revolvers and we're going to test the triggers on them and see if you can justify spending the extra money on a Colt revolver versus a Smith & Wesson revolver. And I know there's fans of both of these revolvers, and I'm a fan of both of these kind of types of revolvers. I like Smith revolvers, and I like Colt revolvers. So I'm not going to be partial to either one of them. I just want to show you what you get and what the extra money you spent on when you buy one of the more expensive ones. So what we have here in front of us today is going from left to right, we have one of the brand new Colt Pythons, the recently released ones that came out a few years ago, I think in 2020. We have a 1980s stainless Colt Python. We have a Smith & Wesson 586-4. It's probably one of the last years of the really good ones, a pre-lock one. And we have a Smith & Wesson 586 no dash on the right. It's one of the first years that came out in like 1980. So what we're gonna do we're going to compare these revolvers, the trigger pulls on them, and I'm going to tell you um, what the difference is. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to tell you that every one of these revolvers have been safety checked. There's no ammunition in any of them, and as I pick them up one by one, I will show you this. If you don't feel comfortable watching this video without me showing you beforehand, you probably should turn it off. So, what we're going to be using here today is a Lyman digital trigger pull um, trigger pull tool here I don't even know what it's called a trigger pull gauge and it's just a digital one and I'm not a professional at this folks so you're gonna have to be patient with me it may take a couple times but it's just an average everyday trigger pull gauge it, this one just happens to be digital now this one goes to a maximum I believe of 12 pound pull and after that it goes off the scale so anything over that it's probably not going to register. <clears throat> so let's start off with the first one here. It's not loaded. This is a new model Smith or new model Colt Python. This one came out in I believe the year 2020, and this is the um, the new release one. This is the one without all the hand fitting in it and everything like that. And Colt did a really good job on this gun. I really like it a lot, and I added my little special grips to it here. Uh, this is the 4.25 inch Colt Python and what I'm going to the next one we're going to do here this is a 1984 bright stainless Colt Python it looks very similar to the one I just showed you only this one was made in 1984 this is the bright um, finish the stainless finish this is not nickel a lot of people get these confused when they see them but it is stainless this one here is a 586-4. It doesn't have anything in it either. Gorgeous gun, pre-lock, 4-inch, 357 Magnum, Smith & Wesson, blued model. This one here is a no dash, 586, equally as gorgeous. This one's in the 6-inch configuration. This one has the wood grips. The one I just showed you that came from the factory with rubber grips on them. Now, we give you a full disclosure here. The two Colts here are bone stock right out of the um, factory. That's how they come. There's been nothing done to them whatsoever. The four inch 586 bone stock, that's how you buy it when you buy a Smith & Wesson. The 586 no dash, the six inch one, I've had a gunsmith do some work on it and the action and you will see that it will reflect in these tests. So what I want to do here first is I want to pick up this bone stock Smith & Wesson. Now, when these came out, they were about half price of what a regular Colt Python would cost. This was the answer to the Colt Python, the 586 and the 686. But this one just happens to be a blued one. This is a 586. And these were about half price. And you paid a lot more money for the Colt Python. And we're going to test the trigger pull on them. Now, Smith & Wesson people will argue that these are just as good as a Colt Python. And I hear them. I know they like what they like. And I like Smith & Wessons too. 
but I'm going to show you what the difference is, is on them. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this thing set up here. We're going to put the ready button on and we're going to go ready and we're going to do double action pull first. We're just going to, it's over. So that means it's going to be over 12 pounds. Let's try it. We're going to try them several times on each pull. So it's over. So it's over a 12 pound safe to say that's over a 12 pound ball now it's pretty smooth it's got a really good action on him but i want you to watch real quick see it's just a harder trigger pull on it now we're going to do single action on this thing we're going to cock the hammer back we'll reset it and it's going to be about a four pound pull on the single action smith and wesson's always have a real good single action pull we're going to try that again Make sure we get the correct rating. I would say it's safe to say this is a four pound pull, about four and a half pound pull on it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move into the new Colt Python. Bone stock, this is probably a little bit more expensive than you would spend on today's money on this 586. These are, these are premium revolvers, and these are the ones without the hand fitting in them. So what I'm going to do here first, I'm going to see what the double action pull is on this Colt Python, this bone stock Colt Python. We're going to try this, and you're looking at about a 10 pound pull on it. We're going to try it again, 9 pound pull. Let's do a couple more just to make sure it's consistent. 11 pounds 10 pounds so i'm going to i'm going to call that about a 10 pound pull on it now what makes this thing awesome is it's just smooth all the way through there's no hiccups you don't feel any grinding or anything like that if you look at the smith and wesson it's not quite as smooth it's definitely heavier but it's not quite as smooth i mean it's a good trigger but this colt python is just smooth all the way through now we're gonna do the single action on the newer Colt Python. See what they come up to. It's gonna be about a five pound pull. It's gonna be very similar to that 586. Six pounds. So it's gonna be fairly, fairly similar to the 586. So what you get here is single action. You're always gonna have a good single action with any of these revolvers, but this double action pull is a lot smoother, a lot smoother on this new Colt Python, and it's a lot lighter than the 586 here. Out of the, out of the box factory, modern Colt Python is going to have a better trigger than the out of the box pre lock Smith & Wesson, how they made them when they were in their heyday. Now we're going to move to the vintage Colt Python. There's nothing in it. These things are known to have their smooth action and everything like that. We're going to do the double action pull on it right away. It's going to be a 10 pound pull right out of the box. This one went off of the, off of the scale right out of the way. We couldn't even measure it. 10 pounds. Went over on that one. Oh, my gauge slipped here a little bit. 11 pounds. So this one's going to have right around a 10 pound pull on the double action. It's smooth all the way through. It's just got a great trigger. Now we're going to try the single action on this one here. It's going to be a five pound pull right out of the box. So it's going to be very similar to the new Python. It may be a little bit lighter, but four pounds. After consistently testing these, Usually this one comes up about five pounds. This one comes up about four pounds and this one's about five pounds on this one on the single action pull. So they're all pretty consistent when you do the single action, the double actions where it's at. This one goes off the scale. This one's going to be the most smooth, consistent, and this one's probably going to be the lightest altogether for the Colt Python. And as everybody knows, Colt Python was a hand-fit machine. It's very complicated. If you compare the two Colt Pythons, this one's a lot simpler action on the inside. 
and when I release this trigger, see the hammer doesn't move at all. On this one, when I release this trigger, it moves. There's a lot more stuff going on inside these older ones than there was these. They made these a lot more simple. Now we're going to get into the good one here. This 586 here has nothing in it. This one's had action work on, on it. And Smith & Wesson people's argument is you can take these Smiths and make them as good as a Cole Python. And folks, that is 100% true. You can do that. The argument that I've always had is you don't have to do anything to these. And their looks alone is what sells people on these things. Just the look of them. I mean, just look at the way these things, the lines on them and everything. Not many people's going to tell me that this isn't one of the most best looking revolvers that's ever been built and that's what everybody compares them to but let's go ahead and do this one here so this one's had an action job done on it and we're going to reset this thing it's got a seven pound double action pull it's only two pounds more than all the rest of these on single action eight pounds so you know it's going to be between seven and eight pounds and this thing is absolutely amazing if you look at this trigger pull on this thing i had a guy do this and he knows what he's doing he's the smith and wesson whisperer i call him now we're going to do the single action pull on this one we're going to reset it and we're going to breathe and it's going to go off it's a two and a half pound pull that's very equivalent to like some of my high-end wilson combat 1911s and everything so, to sum everything up, folks, yes, you can make a Smith & Wesson as good as a Colt. Now, what would happen if we worked on these two Colts here? Who knows? I'm not going to have that done because I think they're fine enough how it is. But my argument's always been, if when you compare these two middle ones, they're both out of the box from the same time era, the Colt's always going to shine. And that's why the Colt costs more. There's nothing wrong with this. This action is awesome on this thing. I mean, nobody would ever notice any difference, but it does not work like this Colt does. This, this action is just so smooth, and the trigger pull is just so much better than the Smith & Wesson. But yes, folks, you can make a Smith & Wesson work like a Colt Python, and sometimes even better. This one, I think, is, a, is better than the two Colt Pythons, but there's been a lot of work went into that to make that happen. So... I just wanted to show you the myth. We're gonna we're gonna bust the myth, folks, on whether a Colt Python's trigger is actually better than the Smith and Wessons because we know they cost more. And yes, they are, folks. Until you get work done on them, the Colt Python's gonna shine every time. Even the new ones, the new Colt Python is gonna be hands down better than a stock out of the box Smith and Wesson. But as you can see you can fix that and it's very easy to do if you know a confident gunsmith so anyway folks let me know if you have any questions on this this is just a modified smith bone stock smith bone stock vintage colt python and a bone stock new model colt python i compared the trigger pulls on all of them and let me know if you have any questions comments on which one you think is better and Anyway, folks, thank you very much for watching my video today, and you folks have a great day.